This is the video lecture for section 1.9 on the knapsack problem. So this is a variation on the bin packing problems that we have been talking about. So a knapsack is another word for a backpack. Basically, we've got this uh, package that we're trying to fill. There's just one bin. The weights in this case uh, not only represent the sizes of the objects, but the weights also have monetary values. And you can use each weight as many times as you want. And the goal is to pack the knapsack or pack the backpack so that it has the highest possible value. So as an example, let's say we have a knapsack that has capacity for 10 pounds, and we've got four different objects that we want to try to pack into this knapsack. And I'm just going to label them A, B, C, and D to make them a little easier to talk about. So we've got A, which weighs two pounds and is worth $3. B, which is worth three pounds, or sorry, weighs three pounds and worth $4. C weighs four pounds and is worth seven dollars, and D worth five pounds, sorry, weighing five pounds and worth eight dollars. So there's a lot of ways that we could pack this knapsack. So remember, it holds 10 pounds total, so that could be five A's. Each of the A's weighs two pounds, so that's 10 total pounds. We could do a B, a D, and an A, or we could do a C and a D and leave one pound left over. So it's okay to have empty leftover space. Maybe that ends up being the most efficient way to do this. If we add up the values here, we see that this first way of packing our knapsack is worth $15. The second way is 4 plus 8 plus 3, that's also $15. C and D, that's also $15. So we might be looking around and saying, well, is there a way to do this where we can pack more, a more valuable combination of weights into this knapsack? So what we're going to do is use what we call a recursive algorithm to find the best solution to this problem. And that word recursive means that we're going to base the answer to our problem on answers and answers to easier or simpler problems that we've already solved. So here's how it's going to work. So if we think about trying to find the optimal or the best 10 pound knapsack, it's going to look like one of these options. We want to think about what was the last object that we put into that best knapsack. Well, if it was an A, then whatever we, we had before we put the A into that knapsack, well, that would have had to be the best eight pound knapsack, right? Because if there's a worse eight pound knapsack, we don't want to use that one. We want to take the best possible eight pound knapsack and then add our A to that. That'll be one option. Or if the last thing we put in our knapsack was a B, B weighs three pounds. So whatever we want to put into that, we want to add that to the optimal seven pound knapsack and so on. So now, of course, that begs the question of, how do we find these optimal smaller knapsacks? It's a simpler problem, but it's still a problem that we don't know how to solve. Well, we're going to use recursion again. So for that first example, we were looking for the optimal eight pound knapsack to add an A to. Well, the optimal eight pound knapsack is going to look like one of these options. Again, A weighs two pounds. So the best way to construct an eight pound knapsack might be to take the best six pound knapsack and add an A to that. Six plus two is eight, so that's going to give us a total of eight pounds. Since B weighs three pounds, the best way to find an eight pound knapsack might be to take the best five pound knapsack and add a B to it. So these are going to be the options for our best eight pound knapsack, and whichever one of these is the most valuable, has the, the biggest dollar value, that will be the best eight pound knapsack, and then we can add an A to that and compare that to our other problems. So it might seem like this gets pretty complicated pretty quickly, but this can't keep going forever. Because if we keep going backwards like this, the, the knapsacks can't keep getting smaller and smaller. Eventually, we'll get down to zero. Eventually, we'll be asking ourselves what the optimal zero pound knapsack is. Well, a zero pound knapsack, you can't put anything in it, so the best zero pound knapsack is empty. So here's how the algorithm is going to work. We're going to make a chart that lists capacities from zero all the way up through the capacity of our whole knapsack. In our example that we're going to be working on, that's 10. So starting with 0, 1, 2, and so on, we're going to determine the optimal knapsack of each capacity using this recursive idea until we reach the capacity of the original knapsack. So in our example, we're going to make a chart that starts at zero and goes up to 10. So here's the chart. So again, we've got our first column is representing capacity, and that's all the numbers between 0 and 10. And we've already filled in that the best zero pound knapsack must be empty, and an empty knapsack has a value of zero dollars. Okay, so now we're going to start going up the list. What's the best capacity one knapsack? Well, if we look at our weights, the smallest weight we have weighs two pounds. So even though our one capacity knapsack has room for one pound worth of weight in it, we don't have anything we can put in that for one pound. 
So this is again going to have to be empty and that's worth zero dollars. What about the best capacity two knapsack? Well, there is only one well, there's only one way to put a weight into a capacity two knapsack, and that is to put an A into my knapsack. All the other weights are too heavy, and so the only thing that I can do, other than leaving it empty, which certainly wouldn't be the best, is to put an A in there, and that A is worth $3. So we're starting to make a little bit of progress here. What about the capacity three knapsack? Well, now we've got two options. The capacity three knapsack is either going to be the best capacity one knapsack plus an A, or the best capacity zero knapsack plus a B. Again, thinking about that recursive algorithm. So capacity one, that was empty plus an A, so that would just have an A in it, which would be worth $3. The capacity zero knapsack is also empty. If we add a B to that, that'll be worth $4, and that's better. $4 is more than $3. So the best capacity three knapsack is worth $4. What about the best capacity four knapsack? Well, that's going to either be a capacity two knapsack plus an A, capacity one knapsack plus a B, and now we can pull in C, capacity zero knapsack plus a C. The best capacity two knapsack just had an A in it, so that's an A plus an A. Two A's is worth six dollars. The capacity one's knapsack was empty, so empty plus a B is just still a B. That's only worth four dollars. Capacity zero was also empty. Add a C to that, we get $7. Best one of these numbers is the $7, so we're going to put a C in, and that's going to be our best capacity for a knapsack. So continuing in this way, we're going to fill in the options as we go. So here's the capacity for knapsack that we just did. Again, we figured out that that was C, and that was worth $7. So just to pause for a second, where are we getting these numbers from? This number comes from this column of my table. I'm just going down the list, and four was the number that I was on. Where did these numbers come from? Well, they're coming from taking the four and subtracting that last thing that I put in. Remember, my thought process is, okay, I want to figure out my best knapsack. It's either that the last thing I put in was an A, or the last thing I put in was a B, or the last thing I put in was a C, or the last thing I put in was a D. Now, it couldn't have been a D in this example, because D weighs five pounds and we still only have capacity four. That's the stage of the problem that we're on. So if the last thing we put in was an A, if we had room for four total pounds, and the last thing we put in was an A, well, this part weighs two pounds, which means we had to have already two pounds in there. If the last thing we put in was a B, B weighs three pounds, which means we would have had one pound left over. Again, so that's where these numbers are coming from, this two, one, and zero. I'm just taking the capacity that I'm working on and subtracting the weights of the last thing that I put in. Okay, so my capacity five options. Again, A weighs two, B weighs three, C weighs four, D weighs five. So I want this number and this number to add up to the total capacity, which in this case is five. So two plus three equals five. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 0 plus 5 equals 5. Okay, so we know what the optimal 3, 2, 1, and 0 knapsacks are because they're here in my chart. I just read that off. So optimal 3 pound knapsack plus an A. Well, that would be a B plus an A, which is worth $7. Optimal 2 pound knapsack plus a B. Well, that would be an A plus a B, which is the same thing, so that's also worth $7. Optimal one pound knapsack is empty plus a C, that's gonna be worth $7. But the optimal zero pound knapsack, that's empty plus a D, now we're gonna get up to $8. $8 is the biggest dollar amount on that list, so that must be the best option. So the optimal five pound knapsack is a single D object, which is worth $8. Same basic idea, capacity six, remember A weighs two, so the remainder would be an optimal four optimal three, optimal two, optimal one. The optimal four pound knapsack was a C, C plus A, that's gonna be $3 plus $7, that's $10. Optimal three plus a B, so that's gonna be a B and a B, so two Bs, that's worth $8, so that's not gonna be it. The optimal two plus a C, that's gonna be an A and a C, which is the same thing as the first bullet point there, so that's again $10. The optimal one pound knapsack is empty, plus a D, that's gonna be $8. 
So it's either one of these, which is just an A and a C. So I'm just going to put A comma C there, and my value was $10. Continuing same way, capacity 7. Again, I'm subtracting from 7 the weights of A, B, C, and D to get these numbers 5, 4, 3, and 2. The optimal 5 was a D, so that's D plus A, which is 3 plus 8, which is $11. The optimal 4-pound knapsack was C, C plus B. C is worth 7, B is worth 4, so that's also $11. The optimal 3-pound knapsack was B. Again, I'm just reading off my chart here. B plus C is, again, $11. The optimal two pound knapsack was an A. A plus D is $11. I should say $11. $11. So there's two ways to do it. I got a tie. So I either could fill my capacity seven knapsack with an A and a D or a C and a B. They're both worth $11, same difference. So I'm just gonna call it an A and a D. But I could just as easily say B and C. There's no difference here. It's the exact same dollar amount. So that's fine. I just picked one. Capacity 8 options, again, same basic idea, 6, 5, 4, 3. I'm getting those by subtracting from 8 the weights of A, B, C, and D. My optimal 6-pound knapsack was A and C, so this would be an A, a C, and another A. Add those together, 3 plus 7 plus 3 is $13. My optimal 5-pound knapsack was D, D and B, that's going to be $12. My optimal 4-pound knapsack was C. So that's going to be two C's, which is worth $14. And my optimal three pound knapsack was B. So that's a B and D, which is again $12. Biggest number on that list is 14. So my optimal eight pound knapsack is two C's worth $14. So I'm getting close to the end here. So I continue in this way, right? So I keep going again, looking back at the optimal knapsacks that I found so far. And what we end up with is that the optimal 10 pound knapsack is an A and two C's, giving me a total value of $17. So to wrap this up, the recursive packing algorithm finds the best solutions, guaranteed to find the best solution, because we're finding the best knapsack at every possible weight. So we could keep going, right? So it would just be one more step to find the optimal 11 pound knapsack. And then it would be one more step after that to find the optimal 12 pound knapsack. So the nice thing about the recursive algorithm is that we've solved every possible smaller problem. And then it's just one more step to solve the next bigger problem. They are time consuming because we're building our solution from the ground up. So we really do have to go through each one of these steps. There's no real shortcut here. Um, but like I said, it does give us all the answers to the previous problems.